what is going on chums and welcome back to the channel and welcome to kind of a video we haven't kind of done in a while a pickups video it's been a long time since we've done one of these but i thought you know it's been absolutely mad this month for stuff coming out and turning up and i thought instead of doing a bunch of shorter unboxing videos i'd just do a big kind of encompassing pickups video and that way i could throw in a few things that i got that wouldn't otherwise get their own unboxing video because there's not really anything to unbox so we're going to start off with let's get a couple of the smaller things that wouldn't need an unboxing out of the way so first of all obviously star ocean the divine force has come out and turned up and um yeah i wanted to pick this up i was very unsure about a new star ocean game after star ocean 5 a lot of people seem to really dislike 4 and i get it but it had a fun combat system that looked really good for the time i have the limited edition of that and I really enjoyed it. I played like 100 hours of it. Definitely had its issues, like I say, but 5 was just a bad game across the board. And yeah, I bought the limited edition for that as well. And it was worth it for the art book that came in it, but the game sucked. And I was kind of figuring that that had killed the franchise. And then this got announced out of the blue. And we got a two-hour demo of it a little while ago. It took me a while to get around to playing it. I only played it like a week ago, I think, and I really enjoyed it. It does feel a little bit like budget Xenoblade in a way, but yeah, I really enjoyed what I played with it, so I thought I'd pick it up, show my support, because, you know, fairly often we don't get JRPGs on the Xbox, so I thought I'd buy a physical copy on Xbox to support that. So, yeah, Star Ocean and Divine Force. Let me know in the comments below if you're playing that and what you're thinking of it. I haven't actually started the full game yet, but I probably will do at some point. I have I own all of the Star Ocean games, and yet three is the only one I haven't played. Partly because of everyone talks about the twist and it just put me off for years, but maybe I'll eventually get around to that one. Another one in that similar vein, obviously, Persona 5 Royal hit other platforms just like what a week ago, a week and a half ago maybe, I think, something like that. And again, I wanted to get a physical copy on Xbox to kind of show my support for these releases coming out because when it was announced and we got the news it was coming to game pass um i was thinking maybe it might be digital only which would have sucked a bit because i like i mean you can see behind me i like collecting my physical games and i wanted to copy of this i did previously have the vanilla version on ps4 but i never actually got around to playing it and then i did clear out a while ago and it was still worth like 25 quid so I ended up selling it and um, just at that point I was praying it'd come to Switch at some point. I never thought it'd actually come to Xbox. So here we are. It's on Xbox. And I own a physical copy of it, which is pretty cool. So that's that. Two new Japanese games on Xbox that have come out. And um, let's move on to this one. This is the Mega Drive 2 Mini. You might remember a couple of years ago, maybe. I forget, I'm bad with time. They put out the, I'd say they, Sega, obviously, put out the Mega Drive Mini, which was really well received, because I think it was, all the emulation was done by M2, who are wizards at this stuff. So it was very well received, and um, I have the Mega Drive 1 Mini here. This is the model I had, the Mega Drive I had, the, the original Mega Drive. Fortunately, this doesn't do anything, but, you know, you can, <laughs> you can press all the stuff. But I had that. Great. Loved it. And then there, that's the Mega Drive 2 Mini. And this one just kind of snuck up on me. I kind of forgot it was coming until my card got charged for it. Another weird thing is the size of the box. Like, this is a very small box. Like, it's not much bigger than the actual Mega Drive 1 Mini. And I have the box at the... Because I'm a hoarder, obviously. This is the box that the Mega Drive 1 Mini came in. As you can see, it's a hell of a lot bigger than that one. Thus, I was very surprised when I opened my Amazon package and this came out. I haven't actually opened it yet because it came on Friday and I had to rush out after work. So I only had a chance to just um, open the box it came in and go, ooh, nice, and then go... So let's have a quick look now. HDMI cable, your, your um, USB, that's what that's called for power. 
Got your one controller, six button controller, which is nice because this one came with the three button controller. Although, if I remember correctly, 8 bit do did do six button controllers, but you need this six button controller because this has Super Street Fighter 2 on it. So you need your six button controller for that. So that's nice to have. And then here, it, I guess, is <laughs> looks like a like an old like flash cart or something. And there it is. It's a Mega Drive Mini 2. I never actually owned one of these. The buttons and stuff still work. Cartridge door still <laughs> lets you stick your finger in it, even though there's nothing in there. On the back, obviously, just HDMI and USB. And uh, oh, you've even got the expansion bay in there for if you wanted to get your uh, Mega CD. I think this one had it too. Yeah, this one does also have it. I can't get the damn thing off. It's there though. <laughs> so there they are in comparison. I'm assuming these are like um, properly relative sizes because I never had one of these. I only ever saw it at friends' houses and stuff. And um, so I don't really remember off the top of my head how much smaller it was than the Mega Drive one. It was definitely smaller. I remember that much. I always preferred this. I still prefer the look of this now. Uh, this does look pretty sleek, I must admit. So that's your Mega Drive 2 with many, many more games on it. Let's have a quick look at the game list because I'm extremely forgetful, as I said. So we have, get right in there so I can see, you've got Afterburner 2, you got Earthworm Jim 2, Golden Axe 2, loads of twos, Fantasy Star 2. Uh, oh, Shadow Dancer, that was a good game. Shining Force 2, Shining in the Darkness, Sonic 3D, Streets of Rage 3, Street Fight, Super Street Fighter 2, the new, the new Challengers, um, Revenge of Shinobi, Thunder Force 4, some very good games on here. And there's also some uh, Mega CD games on there, like Sonic CD, Night Trap, everyone remembers Night Trap, uh, Silphied, Shining Force CD, and a bunch of others. There's like... 53 classic games plus 7 bonus games, as it says there. Thank you, packaging. You've saved me having to do any homework. So yeah, that's the Mega Drive 2. Another thing that turned up in this mad month. Let's move on to this one now, because this... I'm always looking forward to these. The uh, Final Fantasy art books. Final Fantasy 14 art books, rather. This is the first art book for the Endwalker expansion. This is probably... You're probably just getting a load of glare off of the off of the plastic there, aren't you, for that? Let's get this out of it. This will also have a uh, digital code for a... possibly a minion or something. I haven't... I actually know what you get with this one. So I'll, I'll make sure I don't accidentally give that away. Because those are character bound anyway, not account bound. If I remember correctly. There's your little uh, back sheet on it. Got a Lopperitz, got a Lopperitz. Everybody loves Lopperitz. Alright, there it is. Final Fantasy XIV, Endwalker, The Art of Resurrection, Among the Stars. You got all, the, all your buddies there. Even down to Kryl. Who doesn't love Kryl? Yeah, I'm not going to do a massive flick through or anything, but just some like Rads at Hana. I always enjoy flicking through these after I finish the expansions. Kind of remembering where we've been on our journey. Obviously, if you're still playing Endwalker, don't look at this for massive spoilers like Anima from Final Fantasy X being a boss. But yeah, that is the latest FF14 art book. Don't know how well you can see behind me, but I have. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it directly behind me, but I have all of the other ones. I think this is the eighth book. Because there was one, one for A Realm Reborn, then two for each subsequent uh, expansion. So two for Heaven's Ward, two for Stormblood, two for... I just completely lost the name of the previous Shadowbringers. Yeah, so that would be five, six, seven, so this is eight. And then obviously there's the two you might be able to see 
the Encyclopedia Eorzea is there, which are also big. If this carries on much longer, I'm going to end up with an entire shelf of Final Fantasy XIV books. And I ain't going to complain about it, because I love this shit. Alright, so that's um, some stuff. We're like... I'm not even sure if we're halfway there. <laughs> There's still a load more. We'll go with this one next, because this is maybe slightly cheating. This is Trails from Zero, Legend of Heroes, Trails from Zero, Collector's Edition. I say slightly cheating because I think this officially came out on the 30th of September. But NIS Europe being NIS Europe, it turned up for me on the 5th of October. So I'm including it in this October pickups video. But this is obviously Trails from Zero, which is a game that came out, I think, in like 2010 in Japan and never made it over here officially until now. So I figured I'd kind of mark the occasion for this and Azure, the sequel to it, which is out in February, I think. I thought I might as well get the limited editions for them just to kind of mark the occasion that we actually finally got them. Because these were kind of like the mythical Legend of Heroes Kiseki games that we never got. And now we're getting them, thanks to NIS. So this one I have opened, unlike two of the other ones we're going to see. So I'll show you a quick, I'm not going to like fully open everything up, but there's like a, there's a cloth poster in just about, see Eddie's face there, T.O.'s face there, not going to open that up. Here is a cardboard tray, always nice to get those. Uh, there is the game case, the deluxe edition. Get a little mini art book on the inside, which really isn't worth looking at if I'm honest. And like a five track soundtrack sampler. The inside of a cover, a uh, yeah, re reversible cover sheet. And also, this is already on my shelf with my Switch games, which I'm not sure if it's out of shot or not, because I'm not professional. I don't bother to check this stuff. You get a. Steel book, and I do love a steel book. That's why I've left the game case in the box. More art in the cross bell. Just on the back of the game logo, anyway. and then also, hopefully that's not broken. There is a Anthems of Cross Bell official soundtrack. It says official soundtrack. It's one of those sampler CD things. Basically, there's ten tracks on it. So it's nothing to get massively excited about, but it's nice to have. And then the final thing, SSS Classified Files art book. This is, if you have any of NIS's other recent-ish um, collector's editions, like the 8 and 9 ones, it's not a very big, I mean, it's not a big comprehensive art book. We've got like... The character art and stuff, map of Crossbell State, character art, and um, some like background art, and that's about it really. It's nice to have, and it's nice that it's hardback, but as I showed with like the Endwalker art book there, I really like my big comprehensive art books that show you everything from the game so I wouldn't mind having something a bit more you know maybe paying a little bit more and getting something a bit bigger for my money but it's still nice to have and put that still book back on the shelf but yeah this was reasonably priced which is another reason why I bought it a lot of um, a lot of limited editions are getting more and more expensive and giving you less and less stuff this was $79.99 if I remember correctly. And I think for that, it's a pretty good deal. That's like, I'm not sure what the RRP in the game is. I'm going to say it's probably $49.99 maybe. But you're paying another 30 I guess. And you're getting a decent amount of stuff with it. And also this that I completely forgot about because I don't like these things. An acrylic stand with your four main party members. So Ellie, Randy. Lloyd and Tio. I don't really 
like these things. You can probably tell I quite like my anime figurines. These things feel like kind of, I don't know, like the anime figurine for the person that doesn't want to buy an anime figurine because they're expensive. But I wouldn't buy this myself, but it's not bad. It's not a bad thing to like just stick there on the side and kind of, you know, let it just hang out. So I'm not mad about it. All right, moving on. Let's look at this. This is the Legacy of the Crystal, which is a unofficial guide to Final Fantasy. It says there, and you probably can't see it because it's extremely small. Um, this I backed on Kickstarter. You probably, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, you might well be aware of this. It is from Final Fantasy Union, one of the biggest FF channels on YouTube, who I've been watching for a good long while. They produce really fun, interesting um, content about Final Fantasy, and I. Obviously, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, so it's nice to kind of get in and support it because, as I say, they did it on Kickstarter. Got my copy signed by Daryl from FFU there. But yeah, they, I mean, it's a small form factor book, but they really packed in a load of stuff. Like art from, um, they commissioned art for like each section and stuff. Like the Square Enix era. And you've got out there with Zack and Yuna and Lightning, and also a uh, crystal, whatchamacallit, what's that thing called, a bookmark. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's, there's like reviews for tons of Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy adjacent games in here. There's um, contributions from other YouTube and content creators. There's the best page in the book, Final Fantasy X, which everyone knows is the best. And, um, yeah, it's just Alex McCullough there. And um, I haven't had a chance to have a proper look through it yet, because I've been at work and it just it only arrived a week ago, maybe. And I just haven't had the time to sit down and properly leaf through it. But this is the... Dark Crystal Edition, I think it was called, which was um, one of the higher tiers. I think the base version of the game is like a, a white version of this. And I thought they showed the art of the black one. I was like, well, not black. It's like very dark blue. And I was like, that looks amazing. And it really does. Like having it turn up in person, seeing what it finally looks like. It looks fantastic. And um, also got a print of the color there as well. So I'm looking forward to finally finding some time to sit down and properly go through this. Um, but from what little I've looked at, they seem to have just done a fantastic, fantastic job of it. Okay, the flash has gone off on my camera and <laughs> it won't turn back on. Hopefully there's enough light. But as I was saying, yeah, I feel like they've done a fantastic job with this and they should be proud of themselves for what they've accomplished. And I'm looking forward to finally sitting down and getting to have a proper read through it. Another book I got, this didn't actually come out this month. This is just something I picked up this month. And um, that is Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. <laughs> to double check what it was called there. This is like a omnibus edition of a uh, manga from the 90s, I think. About an android living in a kind of post-apocalyptic world who runs a coffee shop and apparently it's very sort of laid back and easy going and slice of life and you know, I really like that kind of stuff and um, I think this is the first time it's been localized outside of Japan and I've been reading up on it and people seem to be really enjoying it apparently though there's gonna be five of these it's, you can see it's thick this is like I think like 20 chapters or something but apparently they're gonna be putting one out a year which is mad the next one's out in February, I think, of next year. But if they're going to be putting one out, one one every February. Do I read this now? Do I wait until like 2026 when it's all out so I don't have to have massive gaps? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll just read it and then I'll just reread it when each new one comes out. But I'm looking forward to getting into it because I like the look of the art um, inside. It looks pretty cool. I'm interested in a bit of kind of 
slice of life with a bit of mystery. Something a bit laid back might be nice. That's Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko that I also picked up this month. And now we're on to the last two things, I think. So let's leave this one till last because I haven't actually opened it yet. The next one is one that really pissed me off, quite frankly, excuse my language, because Nintendo made this really difficult. And when I show you this to you, you're not going to know what I mean. This is the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Collector's Edition. Now obviously the game came out in September, I think. I think it was September. It's been so long now that I've forgotten. And um, I'm not sure if they did this worldwide or if it was just in Europe, but at least in Europe, they delayed the CE contents. And they were like, oh, you, you can buy the game and then like later in the year you can... Um, you can pre-order the collector's edition and it kept getting pushed back and back and back. And then on the day where it went live, they basically just sent out emails to people like, oh, it's live now. Go on, off you go. And then you went, I think I went on the website within two minutes of receiving the email and the website was down and it was down for the rest of the day. And I was at work and I was like, I had it on my phone and I was refreshing the page every couple of minutes just to check it was down the whole day. I got home, I got on my PC, F5ing it all night, it was just down the whole day, so I was like, guess I've missed out, and that would suck, because I have, um, if you've seen the unboxing I did a couple of years back for the definitive edition of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 on the Switch, you'll see I have all of them, <laughs> I have the big box edition of Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii that came with a red pro controller that was like as close as that got to a collector's edition for that game. I have the collector's edition for um, Xenoblade Chronicles X on the or Cross, whichever way you want to say it, on the Wii U with the steel book and the mini art book and everything. I have the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 collector's edition, I have the definitive edition collector's edition, and if I missed out on this, it would have been a gap. I have collector's editions for all of them. And this would have been a gap and i was extremely annoyed when that website was just not loading up and then like a few days later they just sent out another email and they're like oh yeah it's available again so i was at work again because it was the middle of the day so i went on my phone kind of like trying to hide from my boss and get it ordered i went through ordered it had it in my basket hit checkout and I relaxed a bit and I thought, okay, I right, put my details in and I clicked to pay and it popped up a little um, verification thing. So I went into my online banking, clicked to verify it, went back and then it just kicked me back to the basket again. And it did that four times in a row <laughs> and I almost gave up. So I thought, I'm going to try once more. And the fifth time it finally went through. And then I couldn't relax until it actually turned up and I knew I actually had it. And thank God it turned up and I have it. <laughs> what a pain in the ass this was. Nintendo, please don't ever do this again. Just sell it through retailers. For those of you that don't know what the hell I'm babbling on about, that didn't pay attention to any of this stuff when this was pissing off every Xenoblade fan in the world, they only sold it on my Nintendo store. No other retailers. And their site cannot stand up to the traffic of something like this. So it just fell over. And there was, I know there's tons of people that didn't manage to get their hands on this that are really upset about it. And yeah, I feel that because I would have been really upset if I didn't manage to get it and I didn't think I was going to get it, but I got lucky. So after that, let's have a little look at it. You can see the cover art is very, very nice. There's a... Uh, some art on the back. Right, the Monado with the um, Bionis Greatsword and the Orion Titan in the party there. And somewhat amusingly, I guess, the top tray with two indents, even though one of them was empty anyway. Um, because you don't get the game with this. This was $29.99. It was just 
the collector's edition stuff. So yeah, I bought the game separately. And uh, I'm just going to grab something behind me, which I should have done ahead of time. I don't, don't ever learn my lesson with these videos and actually prepare adequately. So what you got in one of those indents was this still book which looks amazing the same art from the cover but it looks fantastic and Xenoblade has form with fantastic art uh, still books I should say it's the back because it's a still book from Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition with possibly some uh, Spoilers inside if you haven't played this one yet. And still book for two, which I still think looks fantastic. I had some issues with that game. I mostly enjoyed it. Some of the character designs are not good, but the still book still looks fantastic. It's a core crystal on the back and very kind of minimalist image on the inside. And there's the three steel books together that I nearly missed out on seeing and I think honestly it would it <laughs> might have been the steel book might have been the thing that I've been the most upset about missing out on one thing that does annoy me about these steel books is there's nothing on the spines which is slightly annoying but you know you can't have everything but then you also this is kind of a smaller, I guess. Um, I think two just had a steel book and a art book. Might have been a soundtrack. I can't remember. It's been like five years. Um, definitive edition. You got that amazing looking Monado vinyl, which is actually in my record player right now. It looks fantastic. So this feels a little bit lighter, I guess. It's literally just a steel book and an art book. But look at the art book. That just, how stylish is that? When I got this and I opened it up and I took the top trout and I saw the art book, I was like, oh wow, that looks, that looks amazing. I haven't opened this yet because I still haven't actually played in the Blade Chronicles 3 yet. So I don't want to go into any spoilers. So um, that's probably going to be my Christmas game, to be honest, because I just haven't had the time to start it other games I've been playing and um, I remember mostly playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 over Christmas so I think I'm gonna end up doing the same with 3 that'd be nice because I have a little bit of time off from work so it'd be nice to play some Xenoblade and relive memories of five years ago right we're on to the final item this has kind of turned into a big kind of switch limited edition pickups slash unboxing video unwittingly because everything turned up this month and uh, the last one is gonna fall into that too and I guess considering what literally just came out this weekend I'm sure people can guess what this one's gonna be but here it is the Bayonetta Trinity Masquerade edition and this thing is enormous I don't know why this is so big because as far as I remember it's just an art book and like some replacement inserts for the game case so I don't understand why it has to be so big this I have not looked at at all yet because it came on Friday I got in from work I took it out of the box and I went ooh and then I had to go out and I just got back Sunday today as I'm recording this so I have not opened this yet taken the seal off and that's it so let's get into this and see why it's so damn big let's see if I can even open it it's, it's defying me very, trying very hard not to damage the out box because it is just very thin card okay let's put the out box aside for a minute We have the game. Then at the three, the thing that dreams are made of, the game that should never have happened. But here it is, we have it. 
This, I'm guessing, is the game covered. Oh, you actually get a separate case as well. That's pretty cool. Alright, and here are the covers. The Fauna 1 for Bayonetta 3, which looks amazing, quite frankly. Well, you can see that. And then Bayonet 2 one. And then Bayonet 1. And now that I have this spare case, I'm thinking I might stick the Bayonet 1 in there just so I can have all three Bayonetters. So there's my copy of Bayonet 2, <laughs> my copy of Bayonet 3. I can have a copy of Bayonet 1 as well because I'm not going to buy the Switch release of it because there's no point because I own it on 360. I own it on Xbox One, I own it on PC, I own it on Switch through this digital bonus code, and I own it on Wii U. I'm not going to buy it again as much as I love the game, but I can use that. And it'll look like I have all three on my shelf, on my Switch. And, um, yeah, I love Bayonetta. I, I'm still surprised it exists. <laughs> Because I adored the first game, which is why I bought it like five or six times. And um, I never thought we'd get a number two. And then we did. And I have that on my shelf here. Not sure I can get it out because my microphone is there. But let's see. The uh, first print edition of Bayonetta 2. Which was made to look like the angel tome thing. So I was always going to buy the Bayonetta 3 limited edition and I remember when I got Bayonetta 1 on the 360, this is very dusty, Ooh, I need to clean more. When I got Bayonetta 1 on the 360, this came as a um, pre-order bonus from Game in the UK, which like, imagine getting something like this now for nothing. Oh, I'm going to have to glue that back on. That just fell off. But, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty cool little thing to just get for pre-ordering a game. That doesn't happen anymore. But, yeah, I love Bayonetta. Um, I've seen the performance is not very good with Bayonetta 3 on the Switch. And, in a sense, I am kind of a bit mad that it is locked on very weak hardware. As much as I love my Switch, it is very weak hardware at this point in time. Um, but I'll take that over it not existing, let me tell you. That's better than it's better than nothing, that's for sure. And under this tray, I still don't understand why this had to be this big, but there we go. Where the hell am I gonna put this thing? It's so big. And then we have and you can get it out. That was jammed in there pretty, pretty well. Uh, the art of Bayonetta 3. And this is just what I was saying with the uh, Trails to Zero. Trails from Zero. Limited edition. Proper art book. Proper thick, chonky art book. That we're not going to go through yet because I haven't played Bayonetta 3 yet. And again, that's probably there's probably loads of glare on that because it's covered in plastic. Very matte black with a little bit sort of embossed. Won't go too crazy because you know spoilers, like I said. There's some creature art in there. Yeah, that is Bayonet 3 limited edition, which would sit very nicely next to my Bayonetta 2 limited edition if it wasn't so damn big. No idea where I'm going to put this thing. But there it is. Bayonetta 2, put it back on the shelf for now. So that, I think, is everything I picked up this month. Like I say, it, it was a lot. A lot of stuff just happened to come out at the same time, like Trails from Zero came out very end of September, but I got it beginning of October. 
uh, Blade Chronicles 3 in the mint edition turned up in October, this turned up in October, Final Fantasy Union's book turned up in October, the Mega Drive 2, the Final Fantasy 14 art book, everything just seemed to conspire to turn up at the same time. So this has been like, kind of like a mini Christmas if I'm honest. And now I've got so much new stuff, one I don't know where the hell I'm going to put it, two I don't know what to play first, or what to read first. First world problems, huh? Anyway, let me know what you've picked up this month, because, as I say, there's been a lot of stuff out. And uh, thank God it came out this month, I guess, and not next month, when I need to buy people's Christmas presents. But let me know if you've picked up any of this stuff in the comments below, what you're looking forward to, maybe, in the coming months. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye!